on my channel one of the earlier videos that I uploaded was from Yuri Bezmanov on subversion and listening to a lot of what he said about subversion and how it works uh, there were things that he said in there that you know sort of struck true very true that subversion isn't just how we perceive it you know the government infiltrating it is also subversion through the attempt to disrupt and change a culture's belief and he used the example too that back uh, you know years ago someone went to Japan and you know wanted to present their culture to them it's like no thank you we don't want it can you leave please and if they didn't leave they would be killed to preserve the cultural identity of that community the attention is unwelcomed your point of views you're welcome to have them but don't bring them here and don't corrupt our community and our culture with your beliefs that is subversion to subvert or to try and take over another person's or another people's culture by implanting your own over the top of it replacing it Michael Anderson made a comment years ago that Mark McMurtry was um, pretty well he could have just as easily been working for the crown as a subverter an infiltrator who comes in to subvert the culture and to corrupt it from within and essentially this is exactly what the OSTF has done whether it's by the design and manipulation of larger bodies or just taking advantage of someone that is psychologically and mentally damaged as Mark McMurtry is that he comes up with this philosophy that they can support and use to disrupt this the actual sovereignty movements that are gaining weight in Australia at the time it is very credible that Mark McMurtry and the OSTF can be seen as a tool of subversion where they are bringing in their beliefs it's a version of what you believe in just enough to get you interested and in believing in what they say so that you are then going into their line of belief rather than holding true to what you have because you think well you know I don't know really the the white man's world out there and the white man's laws that well this guy seems to know it and other people seem to trust him uh, yeah I'll just go with the flow and support those that are trying to achieve it because he it looks like he's trying to achieve the right things for our peoples our, our different tribes and this this is an admirable cause and that's why you've got so many out there that like you see it with Black Lives Matter and you see all these other people out there you know what um, I don't have white guilt <laughs> sorry I don't distinguish people by colors I distinguish them by their actions and they get respect or lack of respect from me because of those actions they walk their talk they they get my respect even if I don't 100% agree with them they walk their talk and they stand true and in walking that talk they don't corrupt others path mislead them and it's the misleading of others that I object to but anyway off subject there well in a way because uh, in my head all these things are connected because uh, back in 2010 Mark McMurtry went on a bro bus tour you know I made a blog out of it so that you can follow the links easily if you click on this it'll take you straight to the OSTF's website 
and you can see it's the Bro Bus Tour page and that's their itinerary back in 2010. Contact Samuel McMurtry. Now, Samuel McMurtry, I believe, shows up in a few of the photos that I'm going to show you in a minute. I think he's the guy in the dressing gown, the slobby one. He's got that same sideways look that he's got in his profile picture on YouTube, um, Facebook. But it's interesting to... You can go down and you can read the whole purpose of the uh, Bro Bus Tour. A four-week period reconvening of tribal parliaments. Well, that's actually a first and a new term to me. I've actually never heard of tribal parliaments. I didn't think the tribes had parliaments. I do believe that there is other words for it, but, you know, this is the whole thing with Mark McMurtry. His whole language is English. It's from the Crown. He uses terms that are redefining what you are. As a tribe, 10,000 years ago, would you have had a parliament? You, I'm guaranteeing you don't even have a word for parliament in your language, out of all the languages yeah, of the tribes. I guarantee you, not one of you can come up with a word that says parliament. And that's the whole thing. There are so many concepts and words that Mark McMurtry uses that even ordinary people don't use. You know, only lawyers and politicians use this kind of double speak and hoity toity language that, oh, reconvening. You know, and all these other big words that are thrown in, like there's one that's autonomous or whatever I have no idea how you're supposed to say that word I mean you know when I was a kid after I'd read all the books I read the dictionary <laughs> I'm pretty well I know a lot of words and how to say them especially in the English language that one that one's one of those words that just comes out of left field that what the hell does that mean because nobody speaks in these terms but Mark McMurtry does. And it was coordinated by the OSTF Secret Secretariat and the production and archive archival tier Muriel Archive Media. The sovereign process around Australia is expected to attract an international media following throughout this historical event. Now, this was back in 2010. There is a video that Mark McMurtry did in September to, um, 2010 after the tour had ended. It was called short because of a death in the family. Seems to be that's something they use a lot, uh, death in the family. I mean, yeah, it does happen, but it just seems to be a regularly used public excuse. Now in this video in September 2010, I am listening to it and I had to keep reminding myself that this video was actually done 10 years ago and not yesterday. Because he's saying the exact same things, saying we're doing this, we've got this in the process, we're going to, you know, it's going to happen, we're going to get them to admit this and it's all in the process, we've served them and all the legal things are being done now so that it's in the courts and we're going to win. All the things that he was saying back in 2010, in 2020 he's still saying the same things are being done and are going to bring about this big win that he reckons is going to happen. I don't know when that big win's supposed to happen because you know, since he got involved with Nightcap on Minjimbo, he got himself pretty cosy for, well, at least the last three years as King of the Hill up on uh, 3222 Kyogle Road. And he's bringing in tribes on other, other tribes' country trying to set up sovereignty through that whole debacle there. But let's look at the Bro Bus Tour of 2010 a little bit more closely. And 
I think uh, now in 2020, with the thousands of people that have actually experienced the opposing end of Mark McMurtry and many other OSTF members, is that it's called the Bro Bus Tour for a reason, because the bros, it's bros not hoes, okay? There is clear male chauvinism. And, I mean, the amount of contempt shown towards women even today by Mark McMurtry is so distasteful to so many men that have actually complained to me about how hateful he is towards women. And that is the mindset and the mentality of the bro bus. Bros before hoes. You don't count if you're a hoe. And if you're a female, if you're a woman, you're a hoe. You count for nothing. And they will talk down to you. And there are thousands of comments that people have gathered over the year from Mark McMurtry and other OSTF members that can prove that. Thousands. And daily there is new comments coming out showing just how bros before hoes. Even if those bros are accused of covering up evidence of pedophilia on another one of their bros, oh, it was a hoe that said it. That doesn't count. And now that hoe has spoken out, let's tell that hoe just exactly what a hoe she is. Oh, yeah. He has been setting such a fine example of do no harm. But let's go back to 2010 when the Bro Bus Tour started. Now, before the official advertised Bro Bus Tour, the itinerary that uh, is down here, that started in July at Canberra, they put out these videos on the uh, Sovereign 10410 10 channel and most of these are actually now unlisted. Uh, you, you can only get there by the links. I found these links by hunting back on uh, their old blog site and, and for some reason two of these videos that are actually unlisted come up on the front page of the channel. Uh, they shouldn't actually show up at all, but they do. So you click on to videos and it's not listed there, but on the home page, two videos that are listed there are actually unlisted. But uh, it was a call out to uh, the tribes in Sydney, uh, the gathering, and as they went through different things and they spoke about different things. Now, these videos are very interesting because Mark McMurtry had a partner, one that seemed to actually control the situation much more than what he did back then. And I do believe that would be the case because the person that he partnered up with, uh, it took a bit of finding out because Mark McMurtry obviously had a falling out with him and he's disappeared. Mark McMurtry even deleted all the photographs of this guy off the OSTF website. Like if you go here to photos now and if you click into any of these, all the ones that have got this his partner in it pretty much mostly all of them have been deleted. So he's been wiped out of the scene. The only way I could actually get these images was to use the Wayback Machine and look at the images through the Wayback Machine. And that way I was able to get all these images of this guy that, well, it took a bit of finding out who is this guy, Mark McMurtry's partner. Because looking at it from today, you look at all those pictures and you think he was doing it on his own. But actually someone else was more leading it. 
because you know in Mark McMurtry's eyes he was more black you know so he had more weight and carried more credibility with the tribes and and why was that the case because his name as he said it in one of these videos is Gary Jacamara now let's get down to the short and the sweet of it is that a of all the tribes in Australia you understand that there are certain tribes that have a different position with the Crown and the government they do not have to fight for sovereignty or autonomy because they already have it and their skin names their tribes to use them to say they're on side their name carries power and it carries respect with the other tribes so if you say I've got them on side then the other tribes are going well these people are more connected that they, they have lost the least out of all their culture out of everything that has been destroyed around the coastal tribes they are fairly untouched and still in tune they know more of the old ways so there is that respect automatically in the tribes you know that there are certain other tribes that have power and to speak from within that tribe means that your words carry more power this is the intent of Mark McMurtry using Gary Jacamara as the front man for this tour because Jacamara is a Walpuri skin name and the Walpuri are one of the few nations, tribes that never were conquered you know as I've said in previous videos it took a long time for the white man to venture into that harsh desert so it killed so many they didn't even get any anywhere you know it wiped them out so by the time the first white man started staggering in half dead <laughs> to um, tribal lands they they were saved by the tribal people and then those tribal people were met as equals they were never conquered they were never taken over and so you know that their connection to land and country to, to people to this their song lines to their dream time to their language to everything is so much more powerful because they have what you know a lot of you have lost that connection and it is them that you should actually be speaking to not Mark McMurtry who has to bring in someone and um, well the thing is that I have asked around is Gary Jacamara Walpuri now in the videos you hit let let me take you down a little bit further and show you who he who he is <laughs> this is Gary Jacamara that's Gary Jacamara and Mark McMurtry sitting on the doggies box and here they are in the bro bus and if you go through I'll just take you through down they talk everywhere here they are together here they are together that's a blown up one of them together I tell you what that that looks the, like the worst job of kitty face painting I've ever seen and is so offensive for them to even be, they look like clowns look at them they're even laughing like ones you see this this little fella here in the dressing gown he comes up in another shot I think that's Sammy McMurtry <laughs> but here we are Gary Jacamara Mark McMurtry and he's out there leading the charge all right he is the tribal man introducing this this fella Mark McMurtry and he's known as Mark McMurtry then he doesn't ever claim to be anything else so as you can see this Gary Jacamara he's the one leading the charge and here he is speaking I think that's at Tennant Creek he's speaking to the elders or the tribe Mark McMurtry is standing back because first he needs this man here 
to connect with them. Then he comes in with his mumbo-jumbo British crown and law talk and rubbish crap and confuse the hell out of them. As I say, there's not even words for half of what he says in any Aboriginal language to start with. So, you know, that's confusing. So you've got to send in the interpreter, someone that can translate the rubbish he says into something that others can understand. So he was a very big part of it, and yet they've all disappeared. Oh, here is um, the guy in his dressing gown again. See that little pouty face? Have a look at Samuel McMurtry's uh, Facebook page. There's a little pouty picture of him with a cap on. Kind of reminds me of this this bogan crackhead that I met uh, in Queensland, actually. Come in on my face and doing all that stuff about thinking how tough that she was. Uh -huh. Yeah, I could show you a video of that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry, that was a bit of a sideline. It's just that, yeah, personal uh, reminiscent as far as when I saw this pouty look on his face and the cap back to front. It just reminded me of this stupid little twit that came into my face one day and thought that <laughs> she, she could... Be. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm going to have to pause. Okay, so back to the Bro Bus. It's set out on a four-week tour. And when you think about it, they breeze in and they breeze out of town. And having to have this Gary Jacamara stand out front and get on a wavelength with the tribal community that showed up to listen and then prepare them to listen to what Mark McMurtry's got to say and then when they come up with all these questions about we don't understand this we don't understand that he then will put it in terms that they can understand but how can you put it in terms that they can understand when there's no definition for so many of these words that he uses that aren't even in the Aboriginal language like yeah um, Find a word for Parliament. There is no word, I guarantee you. I know there's no word for because. Did you, did you know that? That there's no word for because in the Aboriginal languages. So, you, you know, a lot of what we say, and you, you can talk and you go, oh, well, that's because. Uh, you say because, there's no... There's no way to translate it into the Aboriginal language because there is no concept of because. What does that mean? So there's so many words that you cannot translate across into the Aboriginal language. So to say that any of these elders understood what Mark McMurtry was saying only when it was interpreted into the most crudest um base and misleading words like Mark McMurtry likes to use all these big words because it makes him sound smart he's not the only person that does it I mean so many other people out there that they want credibility I watched this one woman the other day that it got so painful to listen to her because nobody speaks like that most people speak in simple terms to be understood to communicate we don't need to speak in all these fancy words to show how smart we are. You know, well, maybe most of us don't need to. I mean, I don't need to prove how smart I am to other people because I can guarantee you there's people smarter than me just like there's people dumber than me. There's always, you know, I'm not the only one. Anyway, that's off subject. What is more on subject, though, is the fact that what you're looking at on the Bro Bus Tour is a cultural philosophy, a belief system, a religion, if you want to call it, because religio actually means to bind. So a religion binds to a certain set of beliefs. So by that definition, any 
belief system that binds you to a set of rules like the OSTF does is a religion and whether it's a religion or a cult then it becomes a fine line doesn't it but essentially they are coming in to tribal communities they have gone down the east coast and done the fluff tour and then they've headed up to the central desert area and the tribes through there to cultures where they need someone like this Gary Jakamara. Now the thing being too that he, he's he got a Jakamara skin name, that's Walpuri. The Walpuri that I've, I've asked around, nobody knows who he is. So my question is, does anybody know who this guy is? You hear him speak in one of these videos um, hang on, I'll find it. All right, it's this one, Amendment to Ceremony. Now, you will hear him speak in other videos. And he's so much like so many of these others that are trained to speak in this tone like this, that if I speak like this, you know I am at peace and harmony. Well, if I talk like this, you know, that's a little bit different. See, we can all make up voices. And when I heard in this video, um, the way that, and this is the video where he speaks. This is, he says who his name is. And the way that he speaks in there. And as soon as I heard him speak naturally, it's like, mm, you're not Central Desert. And even Central Desert are saying, mm, you're not Central Desert, where are you from? So the question is, who is this person that is claiming a Walpuri skin name? Gary Jakamara. Is he really Central Desert? I don't think he is. I think he's more Northern New South Wales. And he took on the name... Uh, just much as Mark McMurtry did because it, he knows that the Walpuri and the Anungal and the Pitinjara, all these tribes, their names carry weight. And if you say that those tribes are behind you, well then, well, you will be more inclined to listen to what they've got to say, even if you can't understand this little puppet's you know, words and all his mumbo-jumbo and all that stupid sovereignty and crown and rubbish crap he's, he puts in there. You know, he's been vouched for, but he's not. That's the thing. He's, it's not real. He's not been supported by these tribes. It's all, and I will get into that in other videos. But as you can see here, this is an unlisted video amendment to the ceremony uh, invitation because apparently where they were going to set up they were told they couldn't go there and so little Mark McMurtry's got on here you know well <laughs> we've got somewhere else to go and we've got um, you know friends in our pocket and you know if if you want to be well you know it's always this like you imagine you know those puffer fish that um when they get, um, they puff out and all these, well, much like a porcupine does, they puff out to make themselves look bigger and more dangerous than what they actually are. Well, they are dangerous because they, they do have poisonous quills and spikes and that, but you get my meaning that even cats will do that. All animals will do that. They'll puff themselves up to make themselves look bigger and more intimidating to, you know, scare the enemy away. That's a lot of Mark McMurtry's bluster, you know, puffing himself up to be bigger and tougher and stronger. You know, this is a peaceful pl protest, but, you know, if you come here, well, yeah. It's like even in one of these where he says, come down and speak to a black fella, and he gives this look as if to say, yeah. I dare you. It's like, 
you're putting out an invitation and open arms and saying it with a smirk on your face as if to say, well, if you do that, you're going to cop a beating. You know, you're a smart-ass little prick sometimes, aren't you, Mark McMurtry? Besides so many other things. So what you're looking at here are the two that have done the Bro Bus Tour. And it's been a heavily filmed and it would have cost a lot of money because, uh, yeah, let's get back to the tour, shall we? So they go on tour with a film crew. And like everything at Nightcap on Minjimble, they've got a film crew too. Nothing is natural. It's all rehearsed and scripted so that it can be recorded by the film crew. Now, here you've got your sound guy holding the, the arm out. Here's the guy on the camera. She operates a camera as well. That's, that's her down here in this picture, and she's down here as well. And this fluffy-headed guy here, um, he's down here. That's him repairing the bus. So, and here you've pretty much got at least four of the film crew. So besides on the bro bus tour of there being the two bros and no hoes, you had uh, Mark McMurtry and Gary Giacomara and these four people. They were all on the bro bus tour. They were there to record it, to set up the shots, to make sure that they got the images to present everything the way they wanted it presented it presented so to create an image now to me you know you can show up with a camera crew but as soon as you bring out a camera people are going to change it's just the natural course either they're going to start over exerting things or exaggerating because they know they've got an audience or they'll clam up because you know well you know I don't know what I want to share publicly and so having the presence of the cameras there of it all being filmed as a production is counterproductive to even achieving communications on a private level within the tribes I mean it's a video, it's a movie, it's a show. And it's something that they have used as promotional uh, for the last 10 years. Money well spent, wouldn't you say? Because in 10 years they've done nothing except live off what they did 10 years ago and how they offered the exact same promises. But Mark McMurtry's not that interested in, any, in that anymore. He wants to set up sovereignty at 3222 Kyogle and the, that whole area and claim that as his own. He doesn't necessarily need all you tribes to appoint him king of the tribes anymore. But, you know, he'll take it. And he has been. He is speaking on your behalf. He has taken away your voice. And he is speaking on behalf of tribes that have not given him permission to speak you know just because there's one person that comes from that tribe that has been drawn in by that belief system doesn't mean they speak for the tribe or that they even have the authority to speak for the tribe and yet that will not stop Mark McMurtry from saying oh well I've got the support of the tribe and he names the tribes well he doesn't have the support of them I know this. So on the Bro Bus tour, Mark McMurtry needed Gary Giacomara. He needed that foot in the door. And yeah, that's why I called it their door-to-door -door selling the OSTF. Because they needed a lead-in salesman. And Gary Giacomara is the lead salesman. He introduced the trainee salesman 
Mark McMurtry. And then when Mark McMurtry had bought on enough and formed everybody under, got them to sign up under his control in the OSTF, well, what happened to Gary Giacomara, the lead salesman? Well, the story looks today that Mark McMurtry was always the lead salesman. Even though he can cut him out of the pictures, he can't cut him out of the wayback machine. <laughs> Don't you love that, Mark McMurtry, eh? You can present the past the way you want it, and that's only your version, but why did you wipe out Gary Giacomara from the Bro Bus Tour? Why did you lead people to believe that 10 years ago you were leading the Bro Bus Tour? No, Gary Giacomara was the lead salesman. He was the lead translator. He was the lead clown. Oh, I'm sorry, but... <sighs> That's just... You know, if the ochre challenge is actually offensive, what do you think that is? That is, that is just... The kids did a better job of actually painting their faces even as inappropriate. But these ones, seriously, you know those little jars of um, mud packs that you get? That's, I guarantee you, that's what they're using. Just smear it around their face and go, yeah, now I'm tribal. It is just such a mockery. Because as you notice that when you do get to the real tribal central desert areas, do you see this man wearing paint around his face? What about this man here? None of them. Because you know what? It's not proper. It's not right. It's not protocol. You don't be doing that shit. And they know that. That's, that's why I say real people will just be real people. They're not going to come and paint their faces like, like this bunch of clowns here. Yeah, it's... And this is what is cultural appropriation. They are mimicking what they think is significant and shows them to be tribal because, look, I've painted my face when they've got absolutely no understanding of why it's even done in the first place. It's just, yeah, it's, seriously. You could stick this photo on a dartboard and... <laughs> I dare say that I'd be shown a few holes in these two places. Pretty good shot with a dart. And I want you to also notice that the only places that they did paint their faces was actually down through the coastal areas that are more city folk than they are tribal folk. That are trying to find it and they have someone like Gary Giacomara, come in and introduce Mark McMurtry. And he's doing the same thing as Gary McMurtry and everybody joins in. But when you get to the central desert areas, if you did shit like that, wow, they know that you don't do shit like that. If they painted up to in any of these meetings that they had with any of the elders here, if they painted up, um, well, let's just say they'd be beaten up at the very least. That is just not on. That would be so disrespectful. I mean, that would actually be like going and pissing on someone's grave. That's how disrespectful it is. And sorry to put it in such crude terms, but a lot of people actually have a lot of trouble understanding the significance of certain things to people that hold those beliefs. Now, Mark McMurtry and Gary Giacomara do understand this, which is why when they've approached the central deserts, they would not dare to paint up or ochre up or misrepresent or even as I've seen them do, a red, a red cloth tied around their head. Now, you know what that means? I know what that means. They would never, ever wear a red cloth in front of these. No, they wouldn't. 
Again, it is not something you do. You know this. So they are leading the sales pitch. Here Gary is introducing Mark. And Mark has taken it ever since. But who is Gary Giacomara? What is his real name? And I, as I said, I don't think he comes from Central Desert at all. I think he comes from northern New South Wales, southern Queensland. He's more likely related to Mark Cora and the Oracle than he is the Walpuri. But there are two others that showed up in the tour too. And seriously, this guy looks like... Mate, I mean, seriously, there's pictures of him and he's he's in one of the videos that's linked up here. You'll see him rolling his eyes around and everything. It's like he's he's trying to pretend to be spiritual, but man, I just think he's on a bad trip. I don't know what drugs he's on, but he isn't on this planet. And who is he? Who is this idiot? Another guy that thinks that painting your face and sticking feathers in your hair like the American Indians is Aboriginal tribal. I'm sorry I'm laughing. It's disrespectful. But, I mean, they're clowns. And, you know, if you object to blackface or you know, whiteface, that's what they're doing that is just... Oh. In, in a worse way, because I've already explained that there are only specific reasons. And if you do see a tribal man painted up, well, the chances are that's war paint. Because, you know, you're not going to get to see the sacred ceremonies, because that's nanya. That's <laughs> so, really, if you do see a tribal man painted up, he's on the war path. And uh, you're in the shit. So it's not, oh, let's paint up and all dance around and, and do some version of I don't know what they're doing. But I tell you what, this guy could make up any dance on the planet he's on. Look at this picture of him down here. I mean, seriously, um, I've seen a few speed freaks over the years. His eyes are just popping, man, popping. There's a few other photographs I didn't upload. It looks like the, the boys had a big night out on the booze too and they got a little bit... <laughs> Especially Gary here, he looks a bit drunk. But I didn't want to shine him in that light. And then there's this guy. There's a few pictures of him. And the question is, and who is that whispering in Mark McMurtry's ear? Who is this guy? Who is Mark listening very intently to. What is his influence in the OSTF? Don't know. Is that his son cleaned up a bit with a haircut a few years down the track? Mm, don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes. Uh, you know that they say that people stay the same? Uh, I'd have to disagree with that because, you know, if people live a good life, there, there is a softness that develops in their face. It's very, um, well, as opposed to the opposite where they become very toxic looking, uh, very hard, and it's, it's written in their face. I couldn't say it more plainly because it is written on people's faces. You do become physically that which you live in your life. If you've got the look of a toxic, hard person, that's probably because you are, and you just can't face up to it. If you've got the face of a pussycat, that's because you've got a good heart. Doesn't mean you're stupid, though. Like, you know, my kids actually, for quite a few years, thought I was a pushover because they'd never heard me when um, I get on, people get on the wrong side of me. And then I remember my daughter saying it to me that the day that I went in, uh, to this business and I gave them an earful, she said, I was so proud of you, Mum, because i never seen you stand up for yourself. I thought, you know, I thought you didn't do that. And I said, no, I don't do I didn't do it in front of you because, you know, I don't want, 
I didn't want to show them the negative aspects. Like I would be sticking up for things, you know, but you don't involve the kids in it, certainly. But they get to a certain age and uh, they see that and it's like, wow, I haven't seen that side of you before. It's like, yeah, it exists. It always has. It's only when, yeah, I, I, I'm not the kind of person that seeks out to be nasty to people or confronting. But I tell you what, if you actually do do the wrong thing, um, yes, I will say something. <laughs> and I can be pretty to the point and blunt about it. Uh, yeah, I don't mince my words. Not like I do on here anyway. So that's probably a long video now and I'm sorry. I have done so many videos on these tribal issues and I have never uploaded them because uh, I get emotionally involved in them. And I don't like to give videos that give too much of my opinion in a forceful way that it, it becomes preachy and sermony because I have my beliefs and everybody has theirs. So, you know, this is only my perspective. And I'm also trying to present the perspective of a lot of the tribes in the Central Desert that are not part of the OSTF and have been constantly insinuated into the OSTF by Mark McMurtry claiming they are part of it. They are not. And yes, there are other issues, so many issues, especially around what happened at Uluru on the 21st of December. There is uh, some rather disturbing video that came out on Evan Strong's Facebook from his dad. And disturbing in the sense that in this video he completely showed no respect for 50,000 years worth of heritage and knowledge and basically said I'll do what I want anyway you know and the, the way he presented it made it sound like look you know look if I came to your house and I I sit up in your front lawn and you know I wasn't actually in your house and I showed up there without permission and I showed up with you know, hundreds of me mates. You can't get rid of me, so you've got little choice. What are you going to do? Um, right, you're going to try and negotiate to get rid of them <laughs> for a start. Because how do you get rid of all of those that will not listen? That will not respect. This is my home. These are my lands. This, this is my culture. These are my people. I've been living this way for countless generations. You've got no right to do this to us. Well, in this video, Evan Strong's dad, he says he's got every right, even though none of them actually know what they're doing, which he clearly admits. And it, it went really bad at Uluru for these people showing up because they did not respect that this is someone else's home. This is their tribal lands, okay? All of it. Even when you're at the resort, this resort has permission to operate within certain boundaries, but it is still on the land and it is still part of everything that is sacred to that culture. And hearing him say that it doesn't matter because we were on the resort oval and it's not sacred land, land is sacred full stop okay it's about doing no harm everything all land is sacred not just some okay i mean what is it with people that they can't grasp this concept all land is sacred now on top of that there are some places that are more sacred that are for ceremony so when you're saying that, oh, this part of the resort on the oval here is not on sacred land because it's the resort and it's privately owned and it's not sacred thereby. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. All land is sacred. All land. 
okay? No matter who stakes a claim on thinking they own it, all land is sacred. But this land has been sacred for more millennia than most cultures have ever stayed together. Do you realise how um, rare it is throughout the evolution of any culture that after 50,000 years they still have that intact? You look in the history books, there is very little that of, of cultures that go that far back. And yet these people are dismissed. Oh, you know, the elders that had the ceremony there weren't going to achieve the activation that they perceived. They disrespected and they dishonoured them. And why? Because they spoke to someone on the phone and they laid down very strict terms about all of these people that have just invaded that, look, we've got, we've got no choice, we have to deal with this. It's not that you're there with permission. It's that you're here, you've created a problem, and now we're going to deal with it the best way we can. But because there's a phone conversation and, oh, that's permission. No, that is not permission. That's no more permission than if a neighbouring tribe came in and, and <laughs> you negotiated a peace with them to say, well, look, now you can leave. That's all it is. It's not permission to be there. It's a negotiation to get rid of them. Because all these people that showed up actually violated sacred ground and sacred ceremony that's been going on for a long, long time. And the once in a so many lifetime event occurred where, like, as a photographer, night photography, photographing the stars, I've done Jupiter and Saturn and all the other planets that are visual and you can get. And it would have been a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to photograph Jupiter and Saturn in the same photograph. Oh, the night it happened, it was all clouded over. Tough luck. <laughs> so my once-in-a-lifetime never happened. But you see, the occurrence of these things is given a particular meaning because Jupiter has got a mythology around it and Saturn has got a mythology around it and as that mythology the father of time and the father of heaven basically everything gets changed in time uh, you know everything on the archetypal level gets changed because Jupiter's involved and the whole formation of time and our place in it changes because Saturn is involved so the, I can understand all that mythology around it, and I can also understand why people see Uluru as being very special. Uh, but it's not the only place that's special, that has heart. And what you don't understand is that wherever you walk on this planet, you are connected to all other parts of the planet. If you are connected to country, you are connected to all country on the entire planet. But people don't understand this concept of the land, of, of connection to country, and how the, it, it, it talks to you. It tells you how you're connected. And it's much like they've proved that photons have a hive mind, that if one photon experiences something, all of the other photons know it, experience it. It's the same kind of thing. And the elders and the ceremony that they brought their energy into and interfered understand this. And if you can understand all the New Age philosophies that they come up with, they would also know that the Australian Aboriginals have always been considered, especially by the Pleiadians, as frequency keepers as one of the few people left in the planet that have been holding frequency for the rest of the planet. And you've got the audacity to go there, not know what you're doing, and tell them they don't know what they're doing. Ah, oh, 
yeah as I say I get wound up in these things <laughs> um, and that's another video anyway because yeah there's a there's a lot that needs to be explored that we are butting heads in philosophies a new age philosophy that is coming out is trying to tell the old wisdom it doesn't know what it's talking about and yet you have to understand the seven sisters gave them that knowledge that they bring to the table today that they've been bringing to the table as frequency holders for this planet for over 50,000 years as we understand in time anyway so to dismiss the frequency holders you new age flakes is to actually incur the wrath and the negativity that you actually encountered at Uluru and you brought all that negative energy and all your confusion into a place that didn't need it because there was work to be done by the elders and you actually interfered with that you who don't know what you're doing yeah and on that note completely off the bro bus tour wasn't it but it, it isn't in the sense that they have come in and subverted they the OSTF have subverted, subverted the tribal cultures and nations they are supplanting your beliefs with theirs and theirs is a false belief in 10 years Mark McMurtry is still making the same promises oh we filed this we're doing this well yeah if you did that in 10 years ago what happened to all those things that you filed and did oh didn't they succeed were you wrong and that's another thing too read a little bit further down here his interpretation of the law is misinterpretation and just because he can come up with some way of looking at something it's not going to change the law and it's not going to give him the success he wants it's just that simple Mark McMurtry is wrong he can't achieve what he hopes to it's pie in the sky stuff seriously you know it's it's a power trip for him he now has got people to sign up under his control under his rules under what he lays down as culture and sorry what I'd call a complete and utter bastardization of your tribal culture to even introduce all this mumbo jumbo British legal crap that he does what to give you something that if he actually already had it well that's another question that somebody keeps asking me and I keep asking too is that how can he offer you sovereignty if he doesn't even have it himself you know he, he can't achieve sovereignty for himself so how can he get, give it to you how can he get it for you if he can't get it for himself yeah it's a bit of a tough question isn't it but that's what he's selling he's selling he can give you sovereignty but he doesn't even have it himself so how can he sell it question is why are you still buying it and on that note I am going to leave it this time catch you next time